so hello everyone welcome to my channel and as usual here is another video and today's video we are going to talk about you know my story on how i won my green card and this is the part four so if you have been following my episodes you know where we are we are at the interview level and without much ado guys if you are new to this ch channel click that subscribe button actually i have realized that high percentage of my viewers have not subscribed as you can see on the screen that is what i just realized please if you have not subscribed please go ahead and click that subscribe button so on the part four uh, i'll be talking about the whole thing that is how i attended the interview the question i was asked and how i responded and to start with you guys can if you for those who have been following you know all the process you can remember that at the application stage or at the when i got my results my middle name was missing and it has been missing from then ds260 everything and up to the appointment letter for the interview when i received an appointment letter for interview the name was still missing it's like i omitted the name when i did the application i never understood up to then so but before i attended the interview at the medical level you know i had some friends there and i checked on their names they were like complete three names so when i check mine it's two names that is the surname and first name so the middle name have been missing all the way wrong so guys you can imagine the tension i was walking along with when i was attending the interview because i had done some research you know on you on google and everything what happens if you miss a name and i could see like it's you are terribly and you are screwed up and there's no need of like proceeding with the interview because you will automatically be denied so for me i had decided like i'll try if i get i get if i don't then i'll try something else to do so my interview day was there and i'm um, there i have in my mind i missed my name or my name is not correct you know what I, the documents i submitted was f including the three names but the name that the kcc or the nvc knows is about only surname and uh, first name middle name is has been missing all the so i don't know what the consumer officer will talk about that i even didn't know what to explain to him so i was just there and now from the interview day you know they had sent me uh the list of things to to carry the documents i should carry and uh, before that i had done some research on you know the dress code and all that things and so I was dressed in an official, even I had gone ahead, you know, an extra mile to buy some official clothes and shoes for, you know, for that, you know, for that day or for that event. So on the interview date, I was there a day before, you know, my interview date was on date 9, April, no, March, date 9, March 2020. So this year. So uh, I had to go, it was on a Monday, so I had to travel on Sunday so that I can be there and on right on time or before time. So that and you know my interview was around 7 a.m in the morning so my documents was as far as one the passport and every document you have to carry it in uh, original copy and uh, some copies you know photocopy so passport two of them you guys if you have been following and you can know how i have you know my issue of the passports and everything two passports for that matter birth certificate you know the amount of money and on the amount of money i'll talk about it because i did some you know i screwed something about the money issue and the education documents the you know certificates originals and copy for me i was requested the i-134 a david of support so i had it with me and i was not requested for the public charge from the ds 5540 but for me i had already prepared just in case you know i was already prepared with extra documents so i had my documentation or everything and there was okay about the money the fee interview fee the money i had carried was okay i had like maybe 350 us dollars but i made a mistake i carried my money through my phone you know the mobile money my mob my cash was in the mobile so i carried it where okay I, I was with my mobile and the money was in the phone so I was with okay i was in that situation so i went ahead on sunday i left home for the interview that will be held on monday so everything went well i arrived safely and early in the morning i woke up and i think around four o'clock you know you prepare you you know you try to to put on your clothes you know and make sure that you are presentable then counter check the documents one by one one by one you know you segregate like the 
the original copies in a different envelope, the other copies in a different envelope, so that if they ask for something direct, straight away, straight away, yeah, without delays. So, all the way, I'm, I'm, I am, you know, I'm like, I'm tensing, uh, the, um, the tension is very high in me, because you know of the name, because, you know, missing a name, you know, I, in, back in my mind, I'm like, what they know is first name and surname. But for me, I have first name, middle name, and even the surname. So I was confused, but I, I just took the risk. So I woke up as usual early in the morning. I just dressed up very well. My money is still in the mobile. I walked, okay, I went up to the embassy. In Kenya, the embassy has three entrances. So I went to the first one. I realized it was not the one to use. I went to the second one. Then the security at the second gate directed me to the gate I should use. So on arrival to the gate, I arrived at maybe my interview was scheduled at seven, but I think five thirty I was at the gate. On I thought I was maybe uh, the first one, but only to my surprise that a lot of people there is already a queue there. There are people who had an interview appointment at six o'clock, seven o'clock, like me, and you know, and it continues. So I'm there. I have my backpack, you know, my bag, you know, with my things and all that. Then I went. I queued. I could see, you know, the people who are scheduled for the six o'clock were the one who are allowed to go in. So for the seven o'clock people, you have to just wait there. So I'm on the queue again. Then one of the security guys, you know, the, the securities are the army or the military in Kenya. So one of them told me that I'm not supposed to enter with my backpack or my bag, you know, the backpack in the embassy the only required or the only accepted baggage is an envelope that contains your document and maybe the phone so i don't know anyone i don't know where to put my bag but at the same time yes, there were some business guys there you know somebody comes packs his vehicle there open up the bonnet and all that the trunk then he's you know he, you pay to put your bag there like he stores your bag for like few hours then you have to pay so i had no other ways i did the same and back to queue so on the queue again so time went and uh, you know i'm counter checking my all my mind is about my missing name because i was like this is the day this is the time if i get screwed here all my processes throughout the year like one year you know all that tension so today is the last day today is the final results and everything so I'm on the queue then around 7, 6, 30. So for the 7 appointment, you know, for me, I was appointed. My interview was around 7. So at 6, 30, you are allowed to go. So there were three police. Okay, there were three security checks. So the first one was at the main gate far away from the reception. So at that one, you go. They check all the documents, the required documents. And then you are scanned, you know, the security guards and all that. You proceed so i did that one i went to the second one the second one they again confirm the documents and the appointment and everything then you proceed so the third one the third security check that is the main one and that is where i my my mess started so i, I was there queuing then my turn came you enter inside is a room you enter you put all your documents on a tray it's passed through an x-ray for you you pass through the x-ray frame you go so i did that everything and at that point that's where you review your everything like you know you want the gadgets like if you had a phone or something in that room they'll give you a tag or number that then you you just leave everything there you just proceed with the envelope so one thing i would advise you if you're attending the interview avoid unnecessary baggage and all that please carry the an envelope it's just enough because you might end up going at an extra cost so I'm there, you know, my bag I left in there, outside there. So I'm here with my envelopes and my phone. And please remember that the money I'm supposed to be for the interview is in the mobile. So, and at the moment I could not recall that. So when I was requested, like, you have to review your gadgets here, I just gave out my phone. So I left my phone there and proceeded to the reception. So at the reception, now I'm there. I got, I went, I received my ticket number and you are requested, sit down, you'll be called inside. So when I got my ticket number and I went outside to and sat down, you know, there were like 30 or so, or more than 30 people ahead of me. So I was just seated there. My mind is just thinking what will happen today, you know, after here, what will happen? If is, will I be denied? Will I be issued? And all that, you know, your mind runs crazy. You 
everything you think is about what will happen for that day so i was there thinking then i just realized something oh i have to pay for the interview money actually you know i have not paid so inside the embassy here that's why i'm going to pay but the money i carried is in the mobile and my phone i left in the police or oh, the security gate so i could okay i was like totally confused what should i do should i go back should i you know and time is ticking it's almost seven so i'm there confused then i decided because ah there are a lot of people ahead of me like 30 or 40 around there so i think it's time i go back request for my phone go outside the embassy all the gates and go withdraw my money from some agents there and then come back maybe i'll be still punctual and that's what i did i never you know notified i could have notified you know the receptionist or something but for me i did i did not do that i just left i went i took my mobile way out and the best thing i have my ticket number so i went i did the with i do my cash to kenyan currency and i came now with cash money now the problem started there so I have my money, I have my documents. On the first gate, I went. Then I was told, you have to queue. But I told the security guards, oh, I was inside. I, just, I had just got outside to correct something I, well, that I was missing. Then I, you know, I submitted my ticket number. And the first gate, they were good guys. They told me, okay, proceed for you. You don't have to queue because you are inside before. Just proceed. The second gate again, they accepted and I proceeded. But now the third day, the main one, the not the the third gate where you have to drop your phones there now the that's where i i i really hate that <laughs> the security guards who are there i talked to them about you know my ticket i have my ticket number everything you know time is ticking and all that then they say we don't care you left outside you have to come back and queue from the rest and now when you check on the queue there are more than 50 50 people queuing so I'm, i'll be like 51 there and time my interview is around seven and by then is maybe maybe around 6 50 but my interview is seven and you see the queue here it will take more than an, maybe an hour you know because they could just go in one by one and you take like maybe that one minute inside that room for there you know screening so I tried to look out and I'm like, when he told me to match for, you know, at the last point, I told him, please, I have the ticket. My time is ticking and all that. Then he said, he, he said, no, I can't help you. You have to go back. So I had no option. As I was walking, you know, you know, you, you have nothing to do. And they are security guards. You can't shout at them. You can't argue at that for that matter. And, you know, you are attending an interview. So I decided to go back. But lucky enough, when I was walking, the secu one of the secu security guards was somehow in and he told me hey, can i see your ticket number then i presented it to him then he said then you don't have to go back there but you can't go as you know you can't be go as the first one you have to stay in the middle so i'm up to like you know let's guess there were like 50 people i was fixed at the center around 20 there so at least that was good and the queue was you know moving very fast but now something else stupid happened you know when you are queuing here then I didn't know that if you are a citizen in the United States, when you come to the embassy in any country of your home country, you don't queue. So when I'm queuing here, you know, checking the time and all that, you know, trying to think whether my ticket number is active already or something, then some citizens, the United States citizen, who are coming for their different services in the embassy, they could come just straight. For them, they don't have to queue at all. Then they come and just pass. So some people with big family, maybe a family of total like eight comes, they are given the first priority. So for your, for the rest of us, please wait. The citizen, you know, the embassy is like a residence for the United States. The ground is for United States. So any citizen in the United States should not queue. So I think I I think there were like over twenty of them who came just um, on the queue, they just come and they are privileged, they come and pass. So time is out. So my 7 o'clock is already passed. It was like 7.30 by the time I could, you know, when I, by the time I got the, to get in the, inside the scanning and all that, it was already 7.30. So I have no option. I can't, you know, I can't, I could not do anything. So I just did the scanning. I left the phone again. So I have my cash, my ticket, I have it. 
we were running to the reception. So I arrived at the reception. All the friends I, I left on the reception, they are not even there. New people are there. So I went, I proceeded to the reception. I tried to explain to the madam what happened and all that. Then she told me, why did you, you could have informed us before you leave. Then I was like, oh, so what should I do, man? So she told me, okay, I'll forgive you. <laughs> then I was like, wow. She told me, just walk out and I will reactivate your ticket number. Then I was like, yes, please, thank you and all that, you know. So I walk out to, to wait to be called again. So, you know, outside there, everyone, even no one is talking. Everyone is just deep thoughts. Everyone, you know, like every, everyone who was there was waiting for an interview. And you never know what can happen. And there is that history that people get denied so easily. So I'm there, I sat down, no one is talking to anyone, you know, checking, you know, your outfit and all that, whether you are presentable and all that. All the, again, you still counter check the documents. Then like, I think two minutes or so, the, one of the ladies at the receptionist walked out and said, ticket number 410. I remember up to date, that was my ticket number. Please come in. So I'm there, I'm like, now this is the moment. My missing name, my middle name, oh God, please help me out on this. Then I walked inside. Then I remember very well, she told me, kindly proceed to counter number seven. I'm there walking, counter number seven. So I expected that I'm, fine, I'm going to find, you know, I thought it's the actual interview that I'm going to get a white guy there, you know. So on arrival to and, uh, counter number seven, inside there, there was a, you know, a Kenyan lady. And I'm like, ah. Will I be interviewed by a Kenyan, you know, citizen or something like that? Somehow I was like, oh, maybe she will understand my situation. But she she, she said, hi, what, what? Then she told me, uh, I'm here to correct your document. So give me this and this and this and this. I gave him the original copies. Then this, the, all this, I need copies. I submitted. Then I could see her, you know, quoting, underlining some things and all that. Then I'm waiting maybe to be, I thought she was going to interview me. I didn't know. Okay, the actual thing she was doing, she was just correcting documents and I would be sent a kit to wait again. So I could see her, you know, underlining some things. Then she asked me some question. Okay, she requested like, do you have the affidavit of support? Then I told her, yeah, I submitted. Then she asked something I didn't have. She told me, for this form, do you have the attached tax, tax receipts? For me, I didn't have. I had only the signed form. I didn't request for the tax receipts and all that so i told her i don't have so she said she, she never responded she said it's okay so she gave me an invoice to go and pay the payment was supposed to happen in the next counter around counter 10. so one thing she has requested for something i don't have the taxation receipts for from the sponsor so i'm like confused oh so my name now again i don't have the receipts so what will happen so I walked there, I went and paid. So from there, I asked her. So after that, what next? She told me, you, once you pay, the person you pay to will tell you what next. So I walked with my invoice. She gave me the invoice. I walked to the cashier. I went, I paid my money. It was roughly 300 and that, I think it was 333 or 34,000 US dollars. I paid there, but I had my home current currency. So I paid. And that the, the person, okay, the lady in the cashier told me after this payment, you walk outside and wait for the actual interview. So I am like, oh, so that was not the interview. Then I just walked silently, humbly, you know. I went outside. So I'm just seated outside now, even more problems and on top of the other problem, you know, the passport. Okay, one thing I had two passports. Okay, the issue is not the passport. The big issue is about my names. And please, guys, if you want to watch the, my, the, my other episode about how I applied, how many years I've been applying for the DV Rotary, how I applied and won, you know, that year that I won, how I applied, the link is above here. So check it out. And also, if you want to see or to listen my story on how I filled my DS260, how I realized I had omitted my middle name, how I, you know, the mistakes I did on the DS260, all the tension way through, Part two is here about the DS260. And again, part three about the medical. And now to talk about the medical, many people are still asking about the vaccination. Please, 
let me make it clear on this video again on the vaccination on the ds260 there is a question asking whether you have the required vaccination by the US law. Please click yes. The reason is to this. Before you attend the interview, you will attend a medical. You will be scheduled for a medical. And on that medical test, that's where you receive the vaccination. So if you feel no, then you have to explain the reason of which you don't have a reason why you don't have the vaccination. But if you feel yes, by the time you attend the interview, you will be having the, all the vaccination required by the US law. So please don't ask me again about the vaccination. Please. Click yes and you'll get the vaccination. The amount of money you pay at the medical test will be involving all the vaccination that are required by the US law. I hope up to that we are clear. So, so um, by now I'm the outside there waiting for the actual interview. So, a few minutes, maybe two minutes again. Ticket number 410. Come inside. Oh. So I'm like, now this is the moment. I went inside and again the reception, the radio at the reception told, please. Okay, she asked me something. She asked me whether I had uh, registered for a career service. You know, after you win, you will leave your passport with the embassy. They will ship it to you when they stamp the visa. So she asked me whether I had registered the, the career service. I told her no. Then she told me after the interview, please pass here so that we can help you register so that you don't have any delays. Then I'm like, ah, how sure you see that I'm going to win? Then I'm like, oh, so everyone here wants me to win. I'm the only one who is trying like to see, to deny myself a visa. So I walked myself slowly, slowly, slowly up to counter number seven. So on arrival, I found a gent there. He was on the other side. So I'm outside side. So I'm like, okay, she was, you know, leaning down. I think she was reading my documents and all that. So I stopped at a distance. Then she, she you know, Lays his uh, head and he's like, come closer, smiling. So then I'm uh, somehow relaxed. Then I'm there. Now the actual interview, guys. Let's start here. I hope you guys are now are ready to learn my questions on the interview level. So the guy was like, he said, hello. I said, hello too. So, and to start with, I had been advised, you know, by some people like the interview session, you don't give unnecessary stories. You only respond to what you are being asked. If it's a yes, it's a yes. If it's a no, it's a no. Don't explain if you are not requested to explain. So I was there. He was like, hello, hello. And the first question was, uh, are you Mr. So-and-so? You know, he said my name. Again, he said only my first name. Okay, he never said the middle or the surname. Only my first name. Are you Mr. So-and-so? Oh, no. Are you Mr. So? Then I said, yes. Okay. Raise your hand up. I don't remember whether it was left hand or right hand. You know, I was going to be sworn. <laughs> you swear. Okay, he read that some documents. You, you know, he's reading. Then your hand is up and you press your hand somewhere else there. So you are like swearing. Then he reads, you know, everything you say here is correct and nothing but the truth. Then for you, you have to say yes. So I, after he read everything, I said yes. Now I was actually tensing my brain because, you know, that in the next four or five minutes, I'll be having, you know, my results, my visa or a denial. So I said yes. Then he told me that hand, please press on this. There was a scanning machine. I pressed the hand there. He took my fingerprints. Then he told me, okay. Now, first question was... Uh, when did you complete your high school level? Which year did you complete the high school? Or when did you, you know, complete the high school level? Then, actually, you know, I had not tried. Every document that, or everything I had done was out of the utmost honesty from me. So, I remember my year, 2013. Direct to the point. The next question, he said, as I can see from your documents, you have been to the university then i said yes so did you join now get this point this is a somehow tricky point the question was did you join the university the same year you left for from high school of course no because you know i, gra I graduated from high school on around october around december so you join the university next year so i said no and he asked, when did you join? So I told him the following year, that is 2014. Then he said, did you study for the four-year course? Okay, did you complete the four-year course? 
And for me, it was not a four year because it was a parallel program and it took me one year. So again, very, very, you know, focused. I said, no, my course was work was uh, running for only one year. Then he said, oh, very good. Then he asked me, I can see your documents. You have traveled on another country. Which country is that? Then I told him Qatar because I was Qatar. I had, I had traveled to there. To Qatar, I was actually working there. I won my DV rotary when I was in a foreign country. So I told him Qatar. He asked me, mm, when did you travel to that country? So it was 2016. I told him 2016. How long have you been in that country? So it was almost four years. So I told him four years. Then when did you travel back to your home country? I told him like a month ago because, you know, I just traveled home country for the interview. And he said, okay. Then he asked me, how did you know that, okay, how did you know, okay, okay, no, before even when you travel back, he asked me, what were you doing in that country? Which type of job? I explained. Then uh, he told me, how did you know there was a chance in that country, the foreign country? How did you know about, okay, where did you get the idea of traveling to that country? I told him I just ran from some close friends who were who had gone there. We were communicating and they could tell me it was a good place. So I did some application here and there and I got there. So I said, okay. And now that's when he asked me, when did you come back and all that. So, and another question he said, so are your friends still there or they are back? So I told him some are still there, some are already back in home country. So he said, okay. He perused some papers, their pages, and just waiting, you know, tension. Um, my mind is back to my name. Actually, the big thing was, I was waiting for him, like, to start my interview with the, what's your name, you know, it's so that he can differentiate the omitted middle name and all that. So, I was perusing some pages, so I'm just waiting. Then he said, uh-huh. So, he got the I-134 form, that is the affidavit of support. Then he asked me, so he read the name of my sponsor and asked me, uh, so this, who, how, how are you related to so-and-so? That is the sponsor name. Then I told him he's my elder brother. And then he said, where is he? Where, which state does he live? I told him. Then he asked me, is he married? I said, I explained, yes. He then asked, how many children does he have? You know, those are the stupid questions you might think that he don't understand, but he already knows. He's just like confirming. I responded to that. Then he went silent. You know, I'm outside, he's inside there. Then he was like typing on the computer, checking something, you know, very, very at a very high speed, typing, typing, typing for like a, a minute or so. Then I'm just there worried. Is he trying to check the names or what is he doing? So with all the tension and all that, then, then he just raised his head and said, congratulations, Mr. So-and-so, your interview was a success. Oh, I felt like, oh. Your interview was a success ah. and i'm like yeah but i don't you know i don't want to react and all that i just said thank you he just you know picked a green card there actually it was a paper explaining he gave me the paper was reading congratulations your visa was in was uh, successful we are going to be left with the passport and all that explanation and all that and also the paper, uh, it was a two-page paper so the other pages were on how i can apply for a career service and done the interview is done so i walked back so it's done he, he has confirmed i just won but there is another mist uh the tension is not over you know i have passed the interview but you know i left my passport there my passport has my three names but the information they have there you know from the ds to 60 was my only two names the middle name still missing so i'm still worried i'm still worried what they will print on the passport you know the visa will it come with my three names or only the surname and the middle name and you of course you know if you have a visa that reads only two names at the airport you will always have issues because three names was two names those are different people so in part five i'll be telling you what happened or what i found when i received my passport back with a stamped visa so that will shock you guys because it was still Okay, I don't want to, I'll be talking about that in the part five. Part three is, uh, part four is done. And so I walked outside, I am there for the reception again. I went and registered the career services and all that. But no, before even we end this part, when I won, I was given two papers. One, for the winning, 
green paper. If you get a yellow paper, something is missing. You get a red paper, you are denied. So for the green, you are safe. I got that one. And again, he, he handed over another paper for the USIS. USIS is the administration or is the department in the United States that deals with processing the green card. You know, when you arrive there, you will need a green card. Actually, you will need a card. It's like an ID. I have it. I have it so far. I already got it. So the paper was requesting me to pay some amount of money. That is 220 US dollars so that my green card can start being processed. So that by the time I arrive in the United States, I'll get my visa, uh, uh, not visa, my green card already processed. So for me, I, did, I went ahead after all that, I went, I paid, but that story I will share with you guys on the part five. So for now, I went at the reception. I did my registration for the carrier services and I left. I went outside, you know, I'm so excited, all smiles on the face, even I went, I picked my bag, even paid everything and just left. The first thing was to call my parents, oh, I'm done, I'm, I, my interview was a success, but in back in my mind, I know something stupid might happen. The name is still, I'm not yet satisfied with the name issue, because, yes, I've been approved, but, you know, I don't know what they will type on the visa, or, you know, what they will stamp on my passport whether it will be three names or two names and that is what i'm going to show you in our part five so guys thank you for watching this episode this is part four and part five will be available at the end of this video by tomorrow so if you are still interested you can check all my first ring second three and this one is four and five is coming soon on how and it will be talking about how what happened you know what i received in, okay, after a few days, actually like four days, I received my passport. Now I'll explain the name issue, what happened. And I'll still explain to you guys how I travel with this pandemic. Actually, you know, it's March, March 9, and already the COVID-19 was had already spread everywhere. So I'll explain how I did my, it was a hair of a situation. And I'll do that in part five and make sure to watch it out. Watch it out. So guys, thank you for watching this episode and part five is coming tomorrow. So I hope, um, you know, guys are learning something about the interview and see you in our next video. And make sure to click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that when I make an upload, you get a notification right away. So thank you for watching this episode and see you in our next video.